Hello and welcome to lesson four of engineering design graphics. Today we are going to talk about the finer points of orthographic projection. Oh, broke my pencil there. Let's sharpen it. Perhaps not bear down quite so hard when we're using our layout pencil. Alrighty then. Today we're going to be looking at section drawing. Now, we use section drawing when we're looking to analyze the inner workings of something, or when we want to describe something that isn't um, readily viewed from a front, top, or side view, our standard orthographic projections. Today we are going to be drawing a pillow block bearing. This is a rotating device that holds a shaft and can bear quite a bit of weight, and it depends on an internal mechanism uh, with ball bearings inside, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we'll try to draw what it is that makes this thing tick. So, first we begin as we would to draw the front view in orthographic projection. That means we start with our layout lines. This should be familiar by now. Set up your sheet, sharpen your pencils, and begin by tracing out center line, primary axes, and the concentric circles that define the shape. It probably comes as no surprise to you that the single most significant dimension for the object that we happen to be drawing today is that central hole. So we're going to anchor our design by finding and marking that hole. This is also a great exercise for building your facility with drawing circles. The eye spots concentric circles readily, and we need to practice and insist upon the particulars of each circle. Remember to draw the layout lines as loosely and quickly as you can. Try them multiple times in order to get that, um, to get that arc as close to circular as you can. When we go back in, and find our profile lines, that's when we will have a chance to slow down and be more careful about the arc of the precise line um, that describes the curve. Now, from here, we're going to move on to drawing the overall housing within which the bearing unit is situated. That's the heavy cast iron part here, and that's going to be an important part of our drawing as well. All of those things together uh, will give us the geometry over which we will then draw our section. Now I want to take a moment to digress and uh, show you if you haven't taken apart or uh, otherwise uh, seen inside a section, um, inside a section of a bearing uh, before. I want to just do a quick natural view of the bearing um, so that you can see what's going on inside. I'm going to speed this part up quite a bit because it is just an illustration of the particular interior view of what we're looking at. So I'm going to draw this from an angle as if I'm looking at the pillow block bearing. And then uh, once we have that geometry of the pillow block bearing, which you will recognize from that early uh, view of it that I showed you, the physical object, um, I'll do a little imaginary cutaway here to show you the way the bearings and the cassette fit inside that housing. So let me emphasize the profile of the housing where it's cut through. There is an outer ring made of steel uh, and inside of that, which I've also cut through, you see the bearings arranged around the interior shaft and held in place with um, a steel or a nylon uh, ring. The individual ball bearings are spherical hardened steel balls arranged equidistant around the center of this overall part, which we call a pillow block bearing in total. So that's what the inside of a pillow block bearing looks like. And I should note uh, before I take this off the sheet that um, I'm going to be cutting my section 
longitudinally through the bearing housing and showing the inside of the pillow block bearing where the individual ball bearings rotate around that center um, sleeve. So this is my section cut through that dashed line. Now let's draw the section. So we take the uh, construction lines that we've drawn very carefully and yet quickly and we begin to emphasize the um, outline that we are cutting through uh, with that section plane. In this case the section plane cuts uh, through the cast iron housing and so I'm going to start with that because that's the simplest biggest shape uh, and when I turn over the pillow block bearing and look on the underside I can see there's a contour to the bottom it's not just flat across the bottom of the part and so I want to register that contour on the section. I'm also now going to add the bearings as well as the steel ring that we call the cassette or the retainer that holds the bearings in place. Now often a design section will tell us a lot of information about something and we want to specify the dimensional constraints of the object. To do that we're going to dimension the object with a uh, a dimension string which is a series of lines extending but not touching the corners of the part. Once I have drawn my extension lines I draw arrows between them. Wherever possible I want to put the dimensions between the arrows where there's not enough space to fit those dimensions in. I want to leave uh, space below the dimension string to put those smaller dimensions. Whenever possible, your dimensions should align with each other and be written in the same size font. As always, don't forget to title your drawing, put a date or scale or any other uh, important feet attributes that you want to make note of. Um, the last thing I want to show you today is uh, how to put some notes on your drawing. To do that, we use a leader line. Now, a leader line is just an angled line with an arrowhead on it, and we uh, call those out to the side of the drawing uh, that isn't otherwise occupied with dimensions or other information. Just like with dimensions, try to keep your lines uh, aligned with each other, your font uh, of a similar size uh, and clearly written, and uh, everything neat and tidy. That's it for Orthographic Projections 2. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next week.